everybody so I'm going to show you as promised how to kind of do a DIY block printing method with materials that you have at home so I'm just gonna run through my materials really quick I've got a couple different colors of acrylic paint right um, hopefully by the time I kind of set this up my acrylic paints not gonna dry right but I kind of prepped my work surface um, for the sake of the demo but as you know, acrylic paint dries up really fast. When I block print at home, I end up using acrylic ink, mainly because it's a little easier safety-wise to clean up in my home studio because I don't have like facilities to clean up some of the oil-based inks, but acrylic paint will work in a pinch, right? So you could also try doing any kind of like liquid material, like tempera paint, craft paint, whatever you have at your disposal, right? So you also are kind of wondering maybe how to create the blocks themselves. So this is one I made kind of before this demo. This is of my tessellated design, right? You guys hopefully saw the little like Pokemon Zapdos tessellation that I was working on. It's the same method you saw in the other video where you take a square, you cut out shapes and kind of put them in other places and attach them, right? They're all attached on the back. Um, it's a great method to kind of ensure that you have a design that tessellates, right? So all I've done is I've taken my stencil, traced it out on some cardboard. This is actually the back of my Bristol board. Um, it's something I had kind of, you know, I ran through a Bristol board, it was empty. It's pretty sturdy, right? So it's gonna be good for a couple uses as opposed to doing cardboard, something like this, right? If you only have this, this will work, right? Because it all comes down to like how you prep the surface. You can see that this guy's a little bit shiny because I actually put like a quick sweep of um, some glue on there. I use Mod Podge, but Elmer's glue just to kind of seal it, right? Because it is still like cardboard based if it gets wet and drenched you know, it's gonna fall apart eventually, right? So this is not as archival as some of the other blocks you'd use like linoleum or the rubber blocks or even wood blocks, but this is a quick, easy thing you guys can kind of replicate at home and play with. I'm also gonna show you how to cut it out of an old household sponge, right? This is also something, a material you can use, and this is really porous, right? So it might be a little easier to work with. You can kind of get this wet and stencil or stamp that way. I also have um, some nicer rag paper. It's a little bit heavier and just some kind of sketch paper or copy paper that I'm going to kind of test my print out on, right? So before I show you the actual print process, right, I'm going to kind of show you how to cut this out using a sponge, right? So I don't want to cut my table. I've got the sponge here. I have my X-Acto blade. You guys have seen, I've pre-cut some of my shapes, right? So I also have some glue or Mod Podge, that's how I'm gonna adhere it together, but I'm also gonna use some tape as well, right? So being very careful, making sure that you're cutting away from whatever hand's holding. You can kind of quickly work around this. Now, you know, it's a sponge, it's not all the same level of surface, right? It's kind of porous, right? So, you know, it's an imperfect system. You're gonna get more of like a texture if you use a sponge. It's kind of more sawing this. My X-Acto blade is the one that I use to sharpen my pencil, so it's a little dull. And by a little, I mean a lot. Right, you guys can see I haven't cut all the way through, but I kind of went around that curve. Now, if you are cutting these out, right, and if you're gonna do the cardboard, it's not that you can't do curved designs. You just have to be patient. This is something I'd tell you if you were using, you know, linoleum or a rubber stamp. Anytime you're trying to cut a curve, go slow, right? And so, you know, if you really try to go for broke and pull down, there's a really good chance that you're going to end up slipping and hitting your finger, right? Ask me how I know. It's happened to me before. Um, and it doesn't feel great, right? So I'm just going to kind of work this around. You're also welcome, welcome to use like household scissors, anything to kind of cut your sponge, right? Oh, come on. There we go. Lots of little crumbs here, right? So you can kind of clean that up. And now I have this shape. So I can reassign this shape somewhere else. So I'm going to attach them up here. Maybe, maybe I like, I like this better. All right, changed my mind halfway through the process. I'm going to tape the back side first, right? Well, I'll tape this side. I'm going to kind of tape it together just on one side because the other side's going to get that, that ink or that material, that acrylic paint. So I don't want the tape to kind of erase some of the texture. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to throw in a little bit of glue in that seam 
and just let it set as I'm working on another process, right? So, you know, you can use a sponge. That's going to be a nice kind of material for you guys to use for this if you do want to try doing your tessellation in printmaking. Um, I know that's something I promised you guys we'd do towards the end of the semester, but at last, here we are, right? So it's popped off there. Glue that together. Hopefully that's going to stay. I'm going to leave a little bit of a clip here. Just going to kind of tape them together until the glue sets. Right. So using the sponge method is something you can do. Just going to let that guy sit over here for a little bit as the glue sets. Right. So printmaking process. I did the exact same thing with this guy. I really took my time cutting around on um, that thicker cardboard, right? It took me a couple passes. I always recommend using a sharp blade if you're going to do something like this. Um, but then you guys can see I made like a little kind of handheld place, right? Just a little place to kind of grip. Um, because what's going to happen is that my paint is going to go all over the surface, right? So if I'm just holding by the edges, I might mess up my design or I'm just gonna get really, really messy really quickly, right? Which is never a bad thing, but this kind of gives me a little extra oomph. Same type of cardboard, just really kind of wrapped and secured with tape, and it's good to go, right? Your at-home stencils, they're not gonna be made to last, right? So you're not gonna get as many prints or attempts out of them before they kind of start to fall apart, right? So I've got a couple different surfaces. I'm gonna test, ooh, Test on my scrap paper first. I'm kind of sliding this out of the way. I'm gonna go for my yellow to start, right? So I've cut my design. This is my block. Now traditional printmaking we've kind of carved into, but something like this, you know, it's not gonna get any details inside my bird, right? That's something I can kind of do post print and add details in after, but I can get that solid flat color, right? Because whatever is the shape is gonna hold the material and is gonna print. You're also gonna notice that from my original design and the images you guys saw on canvas, all my birds are flowing this way. Now, this is gonna print backwards, right? This is other kind of factor of printmaking is that you do have to flip it and kind of print the process, right? So all of my birds are gonna go the other way. If I wanted them to go the same way, especially if you're using this kind of cut out method, I could have just flipped my bird around, put the handle on the other side, and I would have been good to go. But this side had a lot of like jagged edges, so I just thought it would also be interesting to show you if you do keep to your original design and kind of put the handle on the back side like this, it'll get you that reversed image, right? Printmakers always kind of think and backwards kind of images, especially ones that do block printing like myself or Intaglio and Relief. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to kind of pull down. Now, ideally, you would have something called a brighter, which as a printmaker, of course, I have all the acrylic inks in my studio, right? Um, something that looks like this. So if you have something like a roller, I would prefer you guys use this for this process, but in a pinch, a brush will do, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this with this hand kind of really generously ink up or paint my little stencil. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? This is why we do this on scrap paper first. Anytime I print a design, I'm doing it on newsprint, anything else, just to make sure I like the design so I can know if I want to make changes, right? So we know the acrylic ink, or the acrylic paint's going to dry really fast, so I'm going to kind of push down. The important thing is, is to get enough pressure, right? So. I'm going to kind of work the, the finer tipped points, right, because I make sure I get nice, even pressure. I am going to get yellow all over myself, right, but it's part of the process. It's really kind of bare down. If it helps to kind of stand over it, that's also a good option. You guys can kind of tell from the tension in my hands. I'm using quite a bit of force, right, so don't be afraid to really push down. I'm going to gently peel up. You guys can kind of see it's a little stuck to the paper. That's why we work quickly. Eee! All right, I will tell you that the first print is always the hardest, right? Especially when you're working with a new block. But you guys can see I have still a decent, okay kind of 50 50 pull. Let's try for a little more paint. Again, that's another reason to kind of prime your little stencil with some glue or some other adhesive. 
so it kind of makes it a little bit more slick. Comes right off. All right. I'm going to try to line this guy up right above, right? So because it's tessellation, my design should interlock, interlock with the next one. I'm going to press a little harder. I'm going to try to press a little faster because what happened was that my, my paint started to dry as I was printing. All those edges pull up much better you guys can see that that's a really really crisp clean test right that's really cool it fits in just snug and so the other great thing about this is I can switch my colors right so I can take a little bit of a damp rag or paper towel just kind of wipe any of the excess paint off because the paint is not as thick as the acrylic ink it will most likely dry a, a hair faster than the acrylic ink would. Now there's extenders, right? Especially with acrylic ink or acrylic paint, you can put mediums in to kind of, you know, extend the drying time, but who wants to do that? All right, so I'm gonna go for some of this blue next. Notice how I'm really kind of pulling down my paint. I'm not just, I'm not trying to gloop it on. You want a nice even coverage. You do want to work fast, but you don't want globs of paint because that's going to squish out and it's going to make some really textured oogly prints. All right, let's line up bird here. Let's see. I had to think for a second. I'm going to put my next one right here. This is my blue bird. Ooh, very squishy. You are guaranteed to get messy printmaking, especially when you're doing this kind of DIY at home. It's just inevitable. So, you know, don't do this on the, the antique table. Don't do this on the carpet. You're going to get it everywhere. All right. Starting to dig it, right? You guys can also see that any place that these colors overlap, especially if your paints or inks or whatever liquid material you're using is a little more transparent you're going to get the appearance of those other colors, right? You're going to get some greens to kind of throw in the mix, especially if you're kind of working on top like I am. You're going to get some of those mixtures to happen, and that's okay. All right, so that was the test paper. I'm going to show you a little bit of my nicer rag paper. The benefit to using rag paper when you're printmaking, especially if you're doing like screen printing, intaglio and relief printing, block printing, I don't know. I love printmaking, can you guys tell? Um, is that, you know, with the rag paper, it can hold up to a little bit more wear and tear, right? So if you're doing like a watercolor background before you print, it can hold that, that material and that weight. So I'm gonna put one of my little blue birds up here. I'm gonna do some not crazy wild things with the color. I'm gonna show you how to kind of Mix your colors on. See, that's a print no-no. I got paint all over the paper with my finger, but here we are for demo's sake. You are going to try to make this as clean as possible, right? I do like the way this is looking, right? So with these solid colors that I'm doing, I always have the option to kind of go back into them once they dry, add things in, add details, and that kind of thing. I'm taking that cooler yellow, that lemon yellow, I'm gonna work right on top. I'm just gonna kind of let this be however it wants to be. You guys can see it's kind of more of a gradient. It's got some pulled streaks in. This is something you can do too. Your colors don't always have to be solid. You can really play around with how you load up, load up your stamp or your block. Now, if your block gets, you know, a little worse for wear, you can always make another one. Right? That's the benefit to having the original tessellated stencil. If anything, you know, preserve your original design in a sketchbook. Keep that secure and safe because you can always remake it. I have all my screen printing transparencies, all my block designs secured away. Ooh, you guys can see that my paper started to dry a little bit. I right? kind of picked that up, but isn't that beautiful? Kind of teal, transparent appearance. I'm also going to add Let's add a little bit more water. See what we get with 
adding a little bit looser of paint, almost like a wash. I have a feeling that not all of my paint is gonna show up. That's half the fun, right? So with this too, it gives you more freedom to like really play around with, not just, you know, not necessarily like messy aspects, but just with the appearance of how your tessellation looks, right? So for my painters, my people that love to like work with colors and overlapping and experimentation, printmaking is well suited for that, right? Because you always have the initial design and you can always kind of refine anything once you've paint it, right? It's also great to kind of have this repeat pattern because, you know, you just keep rolling with it. Got a little messy with my squished fingerprints. You guys can see I have a lot of paint build up around the edges of my design, right? So if that happens, you can always take that towel, kind of work out some of the paint that's probably spilled over from just applying it, and kind of clean up your design. I'm gonna go for a couple more. Step more of that kind of watercolor-esque things to happen. You know, hopefully when you're doing this, if you're gonna try the printmaking technique, you are taking more time than I am. You're not trying to just bust out everything all at once. <laughs> um, you know, you're a little more precise in how you line things up. All right, let's go next guy. Remember, pressure is key. The other thing about my design, you guys will notice, especially if you Google like block printing, traditionally a lot of blocks are square and you have like the design kind of in the middle of the square cut out. When you're doing these kind of repeat or tessellated patterns, it can be very difficult to line up the next piece if you can't see the edges of the shape. Hence the reason I cut my shape out exactly how I want it, because this just makes it so easy to line up to my printed section. I'm gonna throw one more color down. What color are we thinking? Maybe some ultramarine. It's a little bit cooler of a blue. Let's do some white. The benefit too to using like acrylic paint is, you know, it's not nearly as costly as the acrylic ink is in printmaking. Ink can be a little bit, not a little bit, it's a lot more expensive. But, you know, you guys have already had that painting kind of project. You know a little bit more how to handle the acrylic paint. Just gonna be easy for you guys to kind of manipulate. Okay, so I got my nice kind of light blue gradient. Ooh, I got a lot of excess ink on the side. Just gonna kind of wipe that off. I am the messiest printmaker. You guys thought I was messy, just normal, you know, painting. Somehow I've lost a bird or two. Oh, there we go. All right, and this doesn't quite line up. I've got a little astray with my pattern here. We're gonna make it work. If that happens in your process too, if you're printing and your thing starts to not line up, how can you figure out something else to do with the negative space to make it work, right? Maybe you're adding that in. Maybe you're working another design in or another texture or shadow or color to help make the tessellated design pop. Right, so I'm starting to get somewhere. I know it looks kind of chaotic. I'm just gonna do one more. I keep saying that, just one more. Getting a lot of that blue. I would, li I would like to think that the printmaking in class would not have been as messy for you guys, but for some of you, it would have been just as messy. Myself included. All right, line up my prints. Now cleaning these off because, you know, water isn't great for cardboard. You're probably not going to, don't run it under the faucet or anything. You're just gonna take a damp towel and kind of wipe off the excess paint. Worst comes to worst, you just have to put another layer of glue down and then you're good to go, right? But, ooh, that one came out much better. All right, so I have my tessellated designs. You guys can see that I know my colors are similar, but you can really see those shapes kind of come through. And especially with the printmaking, I'm getting a lot more kind of watercolor-esque things. So, you know, if I'm looking for more, oh, that is purple. If I'm looking for more definition, I would run a marker through that, but everything's really wet. So I'm going to, where's my brush? 
going to kind of touch up some of my lines with a little bit of a dark kind of blue color. Maybe not that dark. Kind of like a dark gray. It's a little stormy cloudy. So what you can do if you feel like you lost some of your initial design, of course you can wait till this is dry, but you can kind of go back and refine some of your edges, right? So I'm just going to kind of go around the one that I feel like is not standing out as much as I'd love. There we go. Kind of pop that forward. Such fun. Maybe add a little bit of water to kind of blend that out a little bit more. Liking this kind of purple feel that this is getting. Look how fun that is. Now that design really, really pops forward, right? And you're really starting to kind of get that essence. I'm going to add a little bit more down here for this guy, a little bit more stormy, kind of bring that tail back in. And that's the part where my design kind of didn't quite fit. That happens. Sometimes you forget in this place where you lined it up, but it's not the end of the world, right? As we've said before, when you guys were talking about harmony, balance, sometimes repeat patterns can be boring, right? And too unexpected, right? So you have to figure out how to make this this project, this tessellation, this emphasis on repeat pattern, interesting, dynamic, and more what you want about, right? So now I have this like cool, weird, watercolor-esque print. And now once it's dry, I can kind of go back in and add all those touches, right? But it be kind of it becomes this like fun process, right? So with my poor little stamp, oh he is sad. I'm gonna take just a little bit of water. I've got a water cup here to my right. Just a damp towel. I'm using like an old piece of t-shirt. Those are great for printmaking, by the way. You will not go through as many like household paper towels. They're reusable, you can wash them, they absorb, right? So I'm not gonna get this too wet. I'm gonna just try to clean off any bloopy things that could mess up my print down the road. And I'd leave him to dry. Ideally, you kind of just leave him propped up like this if you have a handle. I wouldn't press it between books because you're more likely when the cardboard, if it sticks and dries, it's going to rip it apart. But hopefully this inspires you a little bit with the printmaking process. I'm going to check on my little stamp guy. It's not quite glued, but with this too, with the actual stamp, you could always just like tape it together, but you could also just let the glue set, right? But it's the same kind of idea where you can kind of create a stencil and take that shape and print it, right? So. Hopefully, even though, you know, this wasn't the whole linoleum lino cut carving idea, this is one way you guys can replicate printmaking at home and still kind of play around with the process. And, you know, this project is ideal for that, right? Because you're already repeating your kind of printed pattern version. So if you have questions, you know, post in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them. And good luck. <laughs>